Okay, we're going to take a walkthrough of the notes for the writing linear equations in slope-intercept form packet that you have. Okay, we have our list of goals up at the top. Identify the initial value, y-intercept from a table, graph, equation, or verbal description. Use the slope and y-intercepts to write a linear function in the form y equals mx plus b and graph a linear equation given an equation. All right, so a little review. Our equation is y equals mx plus b. m is the slope. b is our y-intercept. Okay. So what we're going to do in this first section, this should be review. Write the equation of a line given the slope and the y-intercept. So take a second, push pause, and I want you to try this on your own. So push pause and see if you get the same answer that I do. Okay, so for number one, our slope is negative two, so I replace the m. Our y-intercept is five, so I replace the b. There's nothing to adjust, no subtraction to become addition, nothing crazy to worry about. So my answer is y equals negative two x plus five. On number two, slope is three fourths, y-intercept is negative three. The only adjustment to make here is that that my plus negative three needs to become minus three. So again, adding the opposite is something that we use to get through a problem, um, but usually, you, just etiquette-wise, math teachers will expect to see you revert that back to a subtraction problem. Okay, so we're, next we're going to write an equation given a graph. Okay, so again, practice. Um, our slope, we're going to go from first point to our second point. I'm going to rise four, and I run three. So I rise four, I run three, so my slope is four thirds. My y-intercept is where um, my line crosses the y-axis, and that's at zero, negative five. So my final equation is going to be y equals four third x minus five. The reason it's minus 5 is because I would have gotten y equals 4 thirds x plus negative 5, and that plus negative 5 would convert to minus 5. Okay, I want you to try number 4 on your own. Hit pause right now and see how you do. Okay, so on number 4, you should have gotten y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. Uh, for our slope, um, our rise and our run, our rise is a negative two, our run is a four. That simplifies down to one half. Okay, so make sure you simplify that. My y-intercept is zero, one. So that makes my equation y equals negative one half x plus one. Okay, write the linear equation of the graph shown. I'm going to go ahead and want you to pause and then you can see if you get the same thing I do. Okay, here is the work and your answers. So if you did not get the same equations, make sure you pause, take a look at the work, compare my work to yours, find your errors, and make sure that you have the correct work done on your paper. Okay, so now we're going backwards and we're writing an equation given a table. All right, so a couple things. Finding the slope, change in y over change in x, that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So they're talking about here. And we, we have a list of steps for you as well. So first, find the slope. You could pick any two points that you want. Does not matter what you pick. Um, I like to stick with positive numbers, so I'll pick these two points. So I'm going to say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm subtracting 3 minus 1 and one minus zero, okay? If that's confusing because there are two ones, then I could have chosen these two and did five minus three over two minus one, just in case it's a little bit confusing for you to see um, ones being repeated. Either way, I end up with two over one as my slope which equals two, okay? So our first step would be to find the slope. 
Okay, second step. Now we're just getting bits and pieces. We're not going to actually find the equation of everything quite yet. Um, second step would be to find the y-intercept. Okay, now let's think about what they're asking here. The y-intercept is when x equals what? On a coordinate plane, if my y-intercept is right here, my, co my x-coordinate is going to be what? Zero. My y-coordinate is, I don't know, it's some sort of number that's the y. That's it. No matter where your y-intercept is, your x-value is always going to be zero every single time. If you look at that Activity 2 worksheet, every single time when you looked at the y-intercept column, the x-value is always zero. Always. So let's take, um, let's take a look at our tables. My x-value is always zero. So when x is zero, my y-intercept is one. Let's find zero on the next table. When x is zero, my y-intercept is three. Next example, when x is zero, my y-intercept is negative one. Okay, so we're always looking for x equaling zero on a table. Now here's something that's going to happen to you if you're given a table. What should you do if zero is not on the table? Okay, you have a few options. Okay, let's take a look at our steps. We have the substitution method. Find the slope m. So I'm going to take two points and find the slope. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I get 4 over 1 or 4. So I know my slope is 4. Then it's telling me on number 2, fill in the slope into the y equals mx plus b. So I get y equals 4x plus b. Then it says, choose an ordered pair, then substitute in x and y. Now you have to solve for b to get your b alone. Okay, so what we're doing here is I'm going to, I'm going to start manipulating this equation. Okay, so I'm going to look at this and say, all right, well, I have, an, I have x's, I have y's, and I have an m. The only thing I don't have is the b. So if I substitute an x, a y, and an m, I can find the b. So let's pick, I'm going to pick something easy. I'm going to pick, um, so this is all for number three. It's the black um, notation. So y would be 11 equals 4 times 1 plus b. So again, all I'm doing is substituting in what I know to find out what I don't know. I don't know the b. I need to find the b. Okay, if my table doesn't have a zero, I need to figure out a way to, to get this y-intercept. Okay, just because the table doesn't have a zero showing doesn't mean it's not there. We just have to go about a different little, a different way to find it. Okay, so if I substitute in, I end up with 11 equals 4 plus b. Just solve the equation, and I end up with b equaling 7. Now, one thing I do want to note as well that some of you have probably already noticed some of you may be saying, well, honestly, looking at the table, do you see how it's, everything is decreasing by 1? So technically, I could follow the pattern and I could figure out 0. See how these are all decreasing by 1? And my y values are decreasing by 4 with each step? I could go down 4 more and actually get 7, which gives me my, my b of a 7. The only problem with this is you cannot count on being able to do this on a table every time. There's a chance that, the pe that it's going to end up with um, some sort of decimal or a fraction, or the numbers are just so high that it would take you forever to get to the point where you could figure out the zero. So don't trust the fact that you're going to be able to find the pattern this easily. Okay, This process is going to be very important when you don't have zero in a table. Again, find the slope. That gives you the m. You, you have y's and x's and the, and the m, find the b. Okay, now let's put this all together. So number one, find the slope. Okay, so we're going to find the slope. We'll pick two points. I'm going to pick positive ones. Okay, so number one is in purple. I'm going to say two minus zero 
over 3 minus 2. That gives me a slope of 2 over 1. Okay, so my slope is 2. Find your y-intercept. We got lucky here. When x is 0, y is negative 4. And then for number 3, plug it all in. Plug in the m and the b into your slope-intercept form. So y equals 2x plus negative 4. And so my final equation is y equals 2x minus 4. Okay, let's try it with these. So first find the slope, then find the b, and then get our final y equals mx plus something. Okay, so for my slope, I'm going to have to use the slope formula. I'll pick some smaller numbers. 13 minus 5 over 4 minus 2. Okay, so we end up with 13 minus 5 is 8 over 2, so my slope is 4. And for our b, I don't see any zeros. Uh, I don't see any zeros in my table, so I've got to figure this out a different way. Remember, we are going to pick an ordered pair to substitute. Okay, So you have to pick an x and a y that are an ordered pair. You cannot just choose any old x and any old y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I know the y is going to be 5, I know the m is 4, and I know the x is going to be 2. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm going to substitute my y, my x, and my m, and then I'm going to solve. So I get 5 equals 8 plus b, 3, negative 3 equals b. So my final equation is y equals 4x minus 3. Okay? Now I want you to hit pause and I want you to try this next one on your own. Okay? So you'll have to pause again so that you can take a look at the work if you got something different than I did. Okay? Next up, graph a linear equation or graph an equation given an equation. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause here. This is enough for today. Um, uh, part one is finished. We will complete part two next.